Some worrying figures have emerged from the 11th SA AIDS conference held in Durban recently. Over 1,300 young people are reportedly being infected weekly in KZN alone. And with 8.2 million people living with the disease, South Africa is the HIV AIDS capital of the world. A shortage, however, of free government condoms is exacerbating the problem. Let's discuss this some more with Ndenatse Mumbengegwe from the Population Services International. She is the global brand product manager. Um, thank you so much for your time uh, this morning, Ndenatse. Um, really worrying figures coming through there, being reported at the SA AIDS conference. But... Um, Conversations that we've had during the COVID pandemic from experts working in the health sector, working specifically in the AIDS and HIV prevention sector, did say that they feared in terms of their scenario planning that this was the kind of problem that we were going to have after there being so many years of a big focus on the COVID pandemic and the impact thereof. Are we now seeing all of what we were warned about coming to fruition? Absolutely. We are starting to see the ripple effect of the hard lockdowns that consumers had to go through in that period because it meant that people who are on ARVs, who needed treatment, who mm. needed to go to health facilities to get access to uh, various forms of medication couldn't do that. So there was defaulting on taking of medication, defaulting of using uh, contraceptive methods or other medication that would be preventative from them getting to a place where they're either contracting STIs or other sexually transmitted diseases. So we're seeing the culmination of those hard lockdowns now. This figure coming out of Durban specifically, especially focusing on young people, however, is quite worrying because this is the part of the population to whom we are supposed to be preaching um, the gospel of safer sex. It's the year 2023. Um, information is supposed to be accessible, especially to young people who have different ways and means of getting information. Where are we failing them? So I think what is coming into place, unfortunately, we know that, um, you know, adolescent girls and young women are a vulnerable part of society mm -hmm. because of these intergenerational relationships that they have. And we also live in a society where, you know, people are open minded and are exploring their sexuality quite a bit. However, in all of these different scenarios that we have in this vulnerable population group, we're also starting to see that condom usage is not as consistent as it is going forward. So we see them getting into these risky sexual behaviors and we see them not necessarily using condoms in the right format that they should to have that preventative um, option that's available from condom usage. Um, where, in terms of the information you're getting from the ground, um, where, where is the gap? Where are young people being discouraged from using condoms? Is there uh, fake news or the wrong information that's going out there? Is it because it's not accessible? We did say uh, this talk about government condoms uh, being a problem. Where, where should we be intervening? So it could be that there is some fatigue around mm. this communication around correct and consistent consistent condom usage, use condoms, use condoms, use condoms, and also being in an environment where there is treatment for HIV. So that fear of contracting HIV is not as strong as it was before. So because they have access to treatment and because they know that their lives are a little extended with mm. access to that treatment, they're also not seeing the importance of that consistent condom usage going forward. So I think that preventative way maybe or to refresh the conversation around condom usage is to make it more interesting and to associate it to other issues related with their day-to-day -day life lives. Mm -hmm. So for example, with us at Trust Condoms, what we're trying to do is reinvigorate a conversation around creating good men. And what comes into play when you think of a good man is giving them the right capacity to firstly get consent and also be honest and vulnerable in having the conversation about negotiating condom usage and also putting it in a space where it can be fun and it can be something that's introduced in this pleasurable, fun way in these relationships. So if we take that stance of creating communication that's interesting, it's engaged, and it's related to your overall lifestyle. It may just create more, um, you know, 
presence to want to start using condoms as opposed to it being punitive and saying if you don't mm. this is the result you will contract HIV and you will potentially you know lose the freedom of doing what you want to do and we all know uh, through experience that that is probably the better way to communicate and engage with young people other than the other way around but if you do then get them on board to realize that this is what they gain by practicing safe sex they still need access to the condoms to the contraceptive i mean we speak about the government shortage there's just been a report now um, about the uh, shortage in um, the implant on contraceptive implants that was reported in the first three months of 2023 in the Gauteng health department now saying they are because of that shortage they're now monitoring the stock levels on a monthly basis to ensure that there isn't that shortage uh, again we really can't be letting our young people down because if we're getting the message across and they want to access it we need to make it available Absolutely. And it's not just an issue for government to tackle in terms of making sure that condoms are available to young people. That's where the private sector comes into play as well, where you've got brands such as Trust, Lovers Plus and all the mm. others that are available in different channels. So if you're thinking, you know, if a young person doesn't necessarily want to access the, the free issue condom, they can go to whichever destination channel that they can go and purchase these condoms. Trust condom, if I can say, retails at at least twelve ninety nine, depending on where you're getting it from. And there are different variations and versions that are available. So it's just about ensuring that accessibility is there, affordability is also there, and also the distribution in different places is optimized. Do we still have an issue of the taboo um, in households, in communities? Now, we might have a young people watching saying, look, I agree with you. You're saying all the right things to me, but I still don't feel confident enough, or I don't feel like I've got the age agency enough to go to my local clinic because so-and-so knows my auntie so-and-so and she's going to say that I came and got a condom or a contraceptive. Are we, are we making headway in that direction? There is a little bit of stigma of trying to access information around correct condom usage from public health facilities or other spaces mm -hmm. where this information should be readily available. But I do believe that this young generation is being raised by parents who are open-minded mm -hmm. and who do understand the importance of having these open and honest conversations with their parents. And also what we advocate for is fathers having these conversations with young men so that they understand the importance of it, they empowering them with the information to be preventative as opposed to dealing with the consequences of not doing it. So other than your parents being uh, sources of credible information, also your friends, your peers, mm -hmm. they also get information from their brothers, their cousins, their fathers, their parents, etc. So they within their groups are having these discussions of why it's important for them to use condoms And a well. discussion that we have to continue to have. So thank you so much for coming to share that insight with us. Some very powerful points being made there by Indinatse Mumbung Gegwe. She is the Global Brands Product Manager at Population Services International. Thank you so much for your time thank and you. the good work you continue to do.